streetcar. <laughs> will be going first, followed by Outlaw Real Street, and the big tire will be last. Uh, I'm going to go over the payout with y'all so y'all know exactly what you're getting. We are taking the pots. We pay back to the semifinals. So let me open my phone. All right, small tire. To win small tire today is $15,000. Runner up will get $2,500, and the semifinalists will get $500. That is 100% guaranteed. <laughs> I count, we counted it all up there before I came down. Bracket tree. It's BJ tree. It's the pad stick. My rocket right behind the red box. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> what side do I put my dial in on? See, we did that a couple weeks ago on that end. I can tell you, that's red's end. I just do this We end. don't need that? No. no. All right. So I'm new here. <laughs> We're just trying to have fun, man. Exactly. <laughs> but all right, guys, I'm going to turn the mic over to BJ. He's going to go over the staging procedures with you. So everybody knows now. If you look, well, remember to start my forehand, Tim? All right, if you have an issue, the 100 back. If you're wrong, the 100 goes towards the pot. So when we call for you guys to, be on time. As soon as we're halfway through whatever group we're in, I'm starting to call the next one. Small tire, where we do have 29 pairs, there will be group A and group B in small tire. Hey, so you got somebody drawing for you? What's that guy you guys watch her stuff? Okay. All right, any more small tire guys need to come back here and get in line. Everybody else, just stay out of the way so we can get them filed out. Outlaw Real Street, you will be next. What guy? So. The guy on a motorcycle on YouTube, the dirt bike guy. Oh, Ronnie Mack. Ronnie Mack. I'm I Billy think he Mack. wears an American flag helmet, but it's like got the face cut out. He's wearing. Well, I ain't that. got that yet. Yeah. I'm Billy Mac. I figured you would have got an open face helmet, to be honest. That's what well, I asked. I saw it from behind. I was like, is it open face? Billy Mac. Billy Mac. It's Billy's alter ego. Yeah. The Stig's redneck cousin. <laughs> <laughs> All we know is he's not the Stig. But he is the Stig's American cousin. Ooh. Big Stig! Are you going to get your use out of it? Are you going to start racing again? Or is this just a one-time deal? This might be just a one-time gig for me. But you're not going to go back and bracket racing? I might. We'll see how much fun I have today. <laughs> I used to win bracket racing. I got a, I got a real good suspicion we're not going to win today, but I'm going to have fun. <laughs> Matches, <baby. laughs> Green, big green. Close. Close. 
Nah, I'll take it. It's not bad. It'd be a couple pairs down. I probably got a better shot in the front half anyway. <laughs> you're, you're behind the driver's seat this time. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah man. I'm trying to have a little fun. Are you? Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> man. You need to have some fun. <laughs> yeah. If you were to win this thing, uh, that's you'd, never, you'd never give Billy the end of it. It'd be over for him. <laughs> <laughs> It is beautiful handwriting. My stressed out handwriting is what Hey Bill. We gotta write we got, what we gotta do. Hey Bill. Oh no, you didn't. <laughs> he can't hear him. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I got one uh, gentleman, Jamie Bishop. Yeah. I got Nick. You got Nick? I got Nick Blooney Oh my gosh. Who? What number did you draw? 22. Come on, Jim. Alright, so we're out here in Darlington for the Palmetto No Prep. Uh, this is my first time here, and they kept telling me that this is worse than drag or, or dig or die and I think it is. I kept my expectations low before coming here and still like I'm like wow it's just bad like you run your hand across it yeah. and it's like many mountains there's just no contact patch at all it's just there, there's no it's it won't take rubber it's not gonna get sticky really at all like well that's the that's the thing it'll we're pouring glue down so it'll get sticky to the touch but it's like that sticky's not gonna do anything it's not actually gonna take until it. until the rubber packs in between like the cracks yeah. and then it'll start having a bigger tire tire contact patch but yeah it's not gonna get good fast no but I got I got tenth pair so I'll be down early on which is kind of what I wanted anyway I kind of prefer to be up front and that way I think I got the best chance Bill's 14 they're 22nd yeah. so I think we both got the right lane I don't know if there's a lane difference I mean no. they both have their cracks they're, as far as like the surface they're exactly the same but the big thing is going to be this right lane is lining up outside of that crack there. We don't want to run straight down it. We're going to have to be outside of it. It's not a tire track to the right or half tire track. Yeah. But we'll figure it out. It's going to be a beautiful day. It's nice out. Tommy's in shorts for some strange reason. Dude, I'm hot as hell, dude. <laughs> hot out here. He's going to go play some basketball after this, I guess. Yeah, I don't dude. know. Fuck it. But we'll make it happen. I think. I think everybody's first round tune-up is pretty much set and there's nothing, you know, nothing that's going to stop that or change that. And then we'll just keep on going from there. Fortunately, with 10 and 22, we got enough space in there that we can, you know, I know I'll be back to the pits and back to help Tommy out by the time we get up there. So, it should be good. I'm excited. I'm very excited. So, first race without Billy, how are you feeling? I'm pretty stressed, honestly. I've been called Billy like 57 times. Everybody <laughs> thinks I'm Billy. Um, it's it's stressful trying to do everything, you know, by ourselves. It's, it's a lot of pressure. I, I don't know how he did it so long by himself, to be honest. I don't, I don't know how he did it, because it's, it's, it's a lot to manage. we got here is failure to communicate. <laughs> uh, I just, I'm just taking a little boost out of it out, out the back and then I'll hit the scramble if I need it. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Feeling pretty good? Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm not trying to be real serious. Obviously, in the driver's meeting, I was clowning. I think some people think you're dead serious. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to have fun and be here and entertain and be, be something in the video other than an asshole, I guess. You know what I mean? <laughs> just trying to have some fun. We ain't had fun in a long damn time. And if we can win, that's cool too. Yeah, if we, hey, if I, if I win, that's great. If I lose, I don't give a shit. I'm just gonna go back and play with the dogs, hang out, sign hats, whatever people. I don't care. I just just want to be myself for a minute. I just want to go back to having fun like you used to.
best round competition you will ever see. We're going to wait on the calls. <laughs> Tune up, it kicked a tire, I pedaled it. 
it got out there and then white smoked the tires again, turned sideways. I got kind of gathered it up and then got back in it. Something happened to his car. I think it yeah. shut off or something and I drove around him. Craziness. I have to figure out something for next round. Yep.
some boost out of it, the N max boost. Well, when I got in there, I just went out onto the graph and pulled that down and lowered it. What I didn't realize is it took out my boost curve and just made it a flat ramp to that. And it fucked me because as soon as it left, it just, I stuck it in high gear and the boost ramp came in just straight up and it just lit the tire. Yeah, so when you're fucking with that boost ramp, you gotta pick a point at the beginning. So right. It your way up. That's not what I did. I started at the end and just lowered it and it just took my boost ramp and straight it up. Yeah, it'll make it linear. If it'll you make it, yeah, that's you what gotta, it did. You gotta pick a point at zero. Yep. And then go to the next point. Uh, and then go that's to the what next I did. Point. That's what I did. I got it fixed now. Yeah. So when that thing says zero, that basically just means it's on gate pressure. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. We're good. We're not, we're not gonna do burnouts next round. I'm not gonna do a burnout next round. All it does is shred the tires. That's what I said. All the heavy hitters aren't doing burnouts. Yeah. Just drive around it. Of course I had to, because I haven't even fucking scuffed my tires in. They're scuffed now. They're scuffed now. Yeah. Alright, what bye. kind of rental car did they give you? I'm driving that Escalade that they got. <laughs> All right. see it. Yeah. <laughs> He's pimping. Damn. Jesus. This dude's pimping. Is that Chiefs? Is that Justin's? Is that Justin's? It's Jackie's. Oh, okay. Jesus. You better not text and drive, you idiot. Yeah, don't crash that. No. Alright, we'll see you, bub. We're gonna put the launch RPM at like 3,500. We got, he's doing this timing table right now. We're gonna soften up the boost ramp. And no burnout. Yeah, it should be 6,000. Yeah, 6,000 RPM. Alright. I let go of the button and I just thought there's no way in the world that the guy next to me is not coming around me any second now. But he did worse than me, so that's all that matters. I ended up, I don't know if our tune up was around, but when I let go of the button, I thought it was spinning a little bit, so I feathered it. And I think that's what got me in trouble because it set the nose down. Oh, yeah. And then after that, it was like, yep, mine set the nose down too. It just was not there. I mean, I, I set it up to go slower than I did last year. And how a surface gets worse with more rubber is beyond me, but that's what's happening. There's just no contact patch, like, and it's so rigid that it would take like 500 big tire cars to go down and do eighth mile burnouts, and it would maybe get a little bit yeah. It's going to be a while. That's how the airport in West Virginia used to be, and now four years later, we got enough rubber laid down that it fills the holes a little bit, and now yeah. it's getting fast. But it took four years for it to do anything. That's not the right list. Huh? Do you hear my John question Dude, I, don't, I have no idea. Do you hear my question? Oh, yeah, I was standing right there. Which side did I put my dial in on? <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, buddy. Today you could dial like a 750 and you'd be on point. <laughs> yeah, that'll tell you how bad it is. He spun. He spun. You know it's bad. That damn it's thing wheelies every spinning. single pass. Yeah. Did you wheelie? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You did? In my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Outlaw Real Street. Outlaw Real Street. Got 14. Big tire racers. Big tire racers. My 10 big tire guys. What are you thinking? Be on standby. You'll be the next to draw after Outlaw Real Street. <laughs> no, I'm not you. Thinking. Like how slow can I go and still be competitive? Yeah. 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 Now, now tell me now what you think. I'll get you some of that. I think you'd be better to line up over here. You see, what I'm, you see what I'm saying? It's slimy there and it's not over here. I'm really, I'm really It's a big difference out here though. So if you come out, 
to buy this first crack. The problem is everyone thinks driving over the crack for it. I think driving in the shit for it. So now if you just take right here and twist and then do it right there, it's, it's night and day difference. At least I can feel it. See that's not sleep. Okay, you're you're so almost you're right. almost sliding there. You can see the I don't think it matters. This Tommy is, Reed. This is Tommy slippery. Reed, big power. Yeah. Tommy Reed and this. Big Power. I need you guys at the drones. Tommy Reed and Big Power. The rubber on top of the rocks is loose. It's gooey. It's balling up. John, right here. So where do you want to go? Here? Draw, and straddle the left tire in the center. See, here's the problem. If you do that, you're going to be right through that fucking crack. Tommy Reed. All right, crew. What are you guys thinking? So. Somebody had mentioned about how it was getting slimy, and Tommy was saying the rubber's balling up. The problem is with the right lane, we can't get out of the groove, because if we get out of the groove, this crack here, we cannot ride in this crack. So the best we can do is put the right tire about here, which will put the left tire just about outside that crack, and just stay in the groove. Hope we turned it down enough that it, that it goes A to B. That's really about all we can do.
club when they club. What'd you say? $70. Damn. Alright guys, so this is Mike Guter versus Bobby Parks. This is the last grad race of the night. I don't know who I got my money on, but there's been some talk ever since uh, Mike Guter won Dig or Die. So they decided they wanted to settle it again here at Darlington, so we'll see what happens. shop we're gonna do another little uh, shop recap here from uh, this weekend at Darlington um, we had a pretty good time overall not a lot of winning but we did have a good time we managed to still make it a fun weekend so uh, we'll just hop right into first round uh, let's see so you you were 10th pair right lane yeah and that didn't work out very well at all <laughs> um, I know a lot of people, they're, one of the big questions was, did I get the anti-roll bar in? I never put that in any video. Yes, it was in. Um, I had it turned down pretty well. And it just, uh, that surface is hard. It is not an easy surface as we all found out through the weekend. And I let go of the button, it spun, I pedaled it shifted time out time out you let go of one button and started grabbing the other no no no, no, no. <laughs> what happened i let go of the button pedaled it shifted and then i saw the other guy start to go like this and i was like all right time for the button as you're like this you're grabbing it 
crazy fucker. Yeah, uh, I think I think when you guys, I don't know, it, it looked pretty wild from the outside, but it was really going slow. It just, um, you know, there, there's still some problems with the car that need to get figured out. And then when you guys see my video later on, the inside GoPro, it was pretty relatively calm inside the car. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I left the GoPro video. It's gonna be on your channel. Nice, but yeah, it's, you spent an hours in the video. The it it happens. I mean, uh, the fact of the matter is, there's some stuff I got to fix with the car, and that surface is definitely more challenging. And I have new power. I don't know how far down we can go with it before the thing even wants to run anymore or anything else. So it's a learning curve. And it's definitely one of the worst services we've ever raced on. It is on. the worst. It's the yeah. worst. It is the worst. And it looks deceiving in the video because after a while you see, like in the videos, you'll see black marks. And after a while it blends and it just looks like there's rubber. But in reality, the, the surface is so coarse that it doesn't take rubber. There might be black marks, but there's nothing there to get a hold of. Yeah. Because the tires are just riding on the tops of all those little, you know, if you if you stuck your head flat down, it would look like this, you know, it looks like little mountains. And that's, that's, just, that's your contact patch. There's just nothing there. If you're on a 10 and a half inch tire, you've, you're probably, you've only got maybe half of that. Yeah. Yeah, as contact. As contact because the surface is so coarse. And what you experienced is textbook noob. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm not picking on you, but no. I'm, I'm trying to, um, we use this tactic, Billy and I, all the time, to 60 foot extremely hard and then pull power out to apply pressure to the guy in the other lane because it is incredibly difficult to pedal and gather something up when you're watching someone drive away from you in the first 60 feet oh yeah it is incredibly i mean your initial reaction is to grab the scramble or grab the spray and um it's very hard it takes i've seen billy do it a lot billy's a freak he really is he's um i've seen billy do it a lot i've seen him behind until because i beat it into his head don't panic. Don't panic. And whatever you do, do not touch that scramble until you stick it in high gear. Just yeah. let that moon boost roll in. Yeah. yeah. So it was a it was a long week. Got a lot of stuff done. And at the end of the day, the car's still in one piece. I don't regret any yeah, of it. How, how mad would you have been if he would have dented your hood? <laughs> well, you wouldn't have dented my hood. It would have shredded the <laughs> yeah. fiberglass. So it'd have been destroyed. But that is an original GM molding with a bow tie in the center yeah yeah that's original gm that's not remanufactured that's not yeah, aftermarket that's like original real gm stuff i took it out trouble. of the gm packages <laughs> like 25 years ago oh, when man. i when i had that car done the first time yeah that's real gm stuff so oh, you'd have been in trouble <laughs> <laughs> okay but so. there it is sitting it's usually sitting outside <laughs> right yeah. yeah i can't be i can't be too mad the flip side the flip side i'll end on is you're never gonna learn. You're never gonna learn that unless you do it. Unless you do it. Yeah. I mean, it sucks, but it sucks to do all that work and drive eight hours plus one way and go out round one and look like a jerk. But hopefully, when we get to dig or die, I keep that in the back of my mind and don't make the same mistake twice. Exactly. So dad was up uh, second in the bunch. How did you feel tuning the truck for the first time, being in it? Was it weird being on the other side of th uh, the other side of things? Like you're getting backed up in the truck, like everything's just you've roll swapped. Yeah, um, I mean the only reason I did it was because Billy's on vacation, and um, I I felt like if the truck didn't run at that event, it would it would not. Of course, it's not going to make the video, and. Yeah. That's what everybody wants to see. They want to watch the videos, the truck and the Falcon or the two trucks, whatever. So if the truck wasn't racing, um, it, it's not something that benefits the channel for that truck to sit. And there's been a lot of people that comment, they, they want to see me race. And to be honest, I really don't have much interest in racing 
uh, I just want to help my kids. But uh, in this example, I felt like the best way to help my kids was to jump in the truck and and drive it. So that's why I did it. But it's uh, definitely different. Um, so you put that boost, you, you were tuning it that first time, and I remember after first round, you were like, I messed that boost ramp up. You are like, okay, I did it backwards. Okay, okay. So before we left, I went out on the street, and I made like three or four hits, and I had it right where I wanted it. Mm -hmm. No burnout, filthy tires, cold yep. surface, dirty. It was snowing. Snowing, whew, right down it. Like, mm -hmm. And it made a really good lick. But uh, I was sitting in the staging lanes, and I was texting your brother, and I told him how much boost it was on at the end of the ramp, and he's like, no, 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 you need to drop that down, it'll never hold it. So, uh, I went in on the boost ramp and the boost controller in the truck, and I just went to the end of the ramp and lowered everything down, like 10 pounds of dome pressure. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't realize was on that boost controller, if you start at the left side of the screen and put your dots where you want them, then you get to keep whatever boost curve that you want. But if you go to the other end of the screen and start there and just click a dot, it wipes out everything ahead of that dot and just makes it a linear curve. Yeah, and yeah. that's what screwed and you. And that's what screwed me because at that point, I kind of knew something was up when I did the burnout because usually with the boost curve the way I had it, I was worried that it wouldn't even do a burnout. Mm -hmm. And when I did the burnout, I was like, whoop, and I was like, ooh. That seemed a little spicy for what I've got programmed in. So that was my warning that there was something wrong, but by that time, you know, there's nothing I can do. So, you know, luckily, uh, Nick had me dead to rights. He, Nick made a really good pass. Nick was flying. Yeah. Nick was flying. That's probably the best pass uh, off the trailer that anybody made that day to 330 feet, just yeah. to be honest. And he had me dead to rights. There was no coming back around that. There was nothing I could do but his car shut off at 300 feet and I I wasn't trying to give up. I mean, I could see him driving away and I pedaled it a little bit and it started to come back and then I seen his nose drop and when his nose dropped, the truck was just starting to come into power and hook. So I just tried to hang on to it as best I could and I managed to drive around him. But I figured there was no way. I didn't know his car shut off because of course all you see from the starting line most smoke. of the time in Darlington is just smoke. Yeah. And like, I was like, oh, it's over. And then everybody was like, wait, wait a minute. And then like BJ was like picking up the phone, like waiting. And then he said, left wing. I was like, there's just no way. And I was like, there's no way he just pulled that off. But, oh, how was it uh, going off of BJ's flagging? Was that pretty cool? So, no matter where we've gone street racing, you may have noticed in the videos, some people may notice in the videos, any time that we're going off a flashlight, I always hold my thumb and my forefinger together and I let go when I think I should let go mm -hmm. to practice. And I've let go as many times as Billy has on BJ's light. You, see hey, you know, I've noticed you do that before. You yeah. stand behind the truck and... Because I like to, like if I'm watching you or, or your, your brother race, I'll watch the, the flashlight come up and I'll let go when I think I should let go and I look through the back glass to see how you kids let go, really? to see if I can help you better what you're doing. Because I know for a while you struggled, you were a little bit slow letting go. I still go. freaking am. <laughs> but yeah, so <laughs> even though I haven't driven that truck, I haven't raced that truck, I've never raced with BJ Flagon, I have watched him flag every single race that my boys have ever been in and I've, and I've let go every single time mm -hmm. and I know that's when he was like when he was coming up like he does his thing he backs up and he comes up and he yeah. comes up and it comes up about halfway and the, and the mm -hmm. light comes on mm -hmm. when he started to come up i had already let go of the button yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what you gotta do because yeah. he to be fair you know no hate on bj but it, it ain't ever switched up if it's coming up it's on <laughs> yeah. yeah i think nobody jumps on him he, I don't. I've never seen anybody jump on BJ because. Well, I mean, sometimes he'll take an extra two or three steps back. Right. Yeah. That's the difference. That, that, yeah. It's yeah. hard to. It's now Chris Lane. You can pretty much bang him right. Yeah. Right <laughs> on. I mean, okay. Now. Yeah, Chris Lane's a pro tree. <laughs> Let's just be honest. You know, but uh, yeah. So. I think that's a thing that a lot of people don't realize too is that you still have reaction time, even if your reaction time is good, you still have it. So if you think about it. 
you know, okay, I'm gonna let go of it here because by the time I let go of it, the tires move, everything happens, I should be okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, so uh, I was up third out of the bunch. Um, we drew one of the Mac TV guys, it was that F-Body Camaro. I raced him at Edgewater, actually, in the buyback race. Um, so that's how I knew him, but Super went up there. Nice guys. Yeah, they're, they're all really cool, but um, I really didn't make, you know, I had, I still have high, very high expectations for the Falcon on this backside stuff, but, you know, it, it pretty much white smoked all the way down, but I was putting myself at fault a little bit as a driver because, you know, as you know, you heard in the video, I feathered it a little bit because I felt it spinning, and so I let off just a little bit, and I think it dropped the nose, and you can see in like the camcorder video, you guys will see it, it drops the nose, it never fully extended. It never did, so it was just like I was just it was a eighth mile burnout the whole way. But yeah. luckily, he just did a little bit worse than me. I got pretty lucky. We, we all got lucky. Well, <laughs> me and him, <laughs> we, we, we didn't all get lucky. Well, he got lucky. He didn't hit the wall. Yeah, yeah. that wasn't luck. I knew. I was like, <laughs> man, don't hit that. Yeah. Wall so we got him by maybe a car. Um, I actually didn't even realize it was that close till I watched the GoPro video back, but. Yeah. So second round, um, we called Billy. <laughs> we made, we were trying to make a bunch of changes at once, and I don't know if that's what got us in trouble, but we decided that we shouldn't do a burnout. Both of us, we decided not to do a burnout second round because it's so coarse that it just shreds the tires. And I mean, there's there's, and the other thing was uh, the rubber on the track was getting real greasy. Yeah. King Turtle was telling me, he was like, I wouldn't line up in that rubber, but there was literally nothing we could do because in that right lane, there's that crack right down the middle. And if you tried to line up, then either way, your your tire is going to be on that crack. And that's probably worse than lining up in the rubber. So, yeah, it was rough. And there, it sucks because when you did the dry hop, it looked good and I was excited. Well, was like, we nailed it. I don't think either of us, when we did our dry hops, were on any boost because we didn't. We didn't sit on the brake very long, and yeah. I guess I didn't ever thought about that. I did. No, it didn't hardly come up on boost. Really? You'll see, yeah, you'll see in the video. Yeah. We both didn't hardly make any boost on the brake. So they left. Yours actually was like sputtering when you left. Yeah. On yeah. the dry hop. Because I was pulling so much timing out of it, and it didn't have any boost. Yeah. And I actually kind of wanted it to. I wanted it right on the edge of popping just a mm -hmm. little bit, just yeah. to yeah. allow the tire to roll out. And that so, was yeah. that was like a. You know, it left, you left and it went 60 feet and then it lit the tire up again. And I think that was kind of, I think that was kind of my fault too because we didn't pay enough attention. The first 60 foot in the first run, it worked. And until it, I let off. Right, until you let off and, and then it spun the tire. So where we went back and talked to Billy and changed you know, the timing off the launch probably should have left a little bit of the 60 foot alone but extended it out yeah. because that's where it just we got needed trouble. some softening it's it's hard that there's it's such a fine balance. you picked a really hard race to start <laughs> tuning for us because it's it's very it's a very fine line yeah tuning. the fine line of keeping the front end up keeping the weight on the back tire keeping enough power in it so it can make boost when it mm -hmm. gets out i mean yeah. billy is and it's so hard to be patient when you see some of these guys like Kendall looked like he was going freaking yeah. like 620s, 630s, like right off the trailer. I'm just like. They're good. They, they don't miss a thing. No, no, they don't. They don't miss a thing. Um, they pay a very close attention to every detail. Yeah. They don't screw around. Um, they're a good team. But Billy, um, Billy has learned how to tune for surfaces the hard way from day one. Yeah. Because Billy has never had any of the stuff that's in this Falcon. Yeah. So the difference between the Falcon and the truck, the Falcon is like walking into a dark room and you're looking for a needle in the carpet in a dark room. And the Falcon's like you just walk in, turn the light switch on, oh, there it is. Right. The truck, it's like you turn your cell phone right. flashlight on and you're trying to find it, you know what I mean? Yeah. In the carpet. and. It's so hard. The truck is so hard, but the way he learned was so difficult that 
he really got good at it. And yeah. when you hand him something like this. When you gave him the tools, then it was. Yeah. 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 So Billy is just an incredibly talented tuner when it comes to chassis, shocks, uh, boost reading curves, road. Yeah. and reading the surface. He's extremely talented at that. That's one thing we realized this weekend is uh, racing without Billy is five times harder. Yeah. It is, you know. Oh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah. I knew that was coming. I mean, I, I do want to give credit, though. Rob was out there helping us out. He did a real yeah, good Big job. Rob, yeah. thank, thank you for, you coming, Rob, big for Rob. coming along. Because if it wasn't for Rob, I couldn't have even raced. Because um, not that I, I don't want this to sound like I'm, it's hard for me because if, I, if the wind is down, there's somebody gonna come up and wanna talk. And I'm trying to concentrate and think about what I'm doing and the boost curve and how I'm gonna let go of the button and, how, and when I'm gonna let go of the button and like all these things from the point where you line up in the staging lanes, I don't know about you guys, but my, my mind never stops. Oh, yeah. It never stops. So it's hard when somebody wants to come up and take a picture or talk to you about something or ask questions. It's hard, and with Rob there, um, I don't have to worry about setting the tires or you know, a lot of the things that Rob was taking care of for me. Like we got there Friday night and the valve covers were let, ready to fall off. Right. I had no idea the valve covers were loose, but the valve covers were loose, and Rob tightened the valve covers and cleaned the gaskets all up. And Rob's like second string behind Kenny Powers. Second string behind Kenny Powers. I wouldn't even yeah. say that. They're, they're Kenny different. Powers they is on a different purpose. different deal. <laughs> yeah, <deal. laughs> yeah oh, okay. they serve different purposes. <laughs> Service, yeah, different yeah. purposes. Rob is Rob top you, notch. You could do that. Rob would be my first string then. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, really, I mean, he made it really easy, and just like you said, in the staging lanes, like. If, I don't know if anybody's ever noticed, but like I do breathing exercises because I try to get my heart rate down. And you need to. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but then when I, you know, that's it. Like, there's so much going on in the mind when we're sitting in those cars, and you know, did we do everything right? Did did we set the tune up right? And then even still, you see cars in front of you, and you go, shit, three of them just spun the tire really bad. Did I really take enough out? Is you got to just run your race. Yeah. Fuck every other car, just run your road, run your lane, uh, and don't let anybody come up and done don't let anybody to come up and tell you, hey man, it's looking real bad out there. Yeah. You better turn it down, or hey, it's getting fast, go turn it up. Yeah. Just, there's a difference. There's a difference if one of us say to each other, you know, there's been times, hey, it's after 300 foot, you're gonna spit, be ready for it. There's we'll definitely been people I've seen trying to fib Billy, fib me, just trying to get our stuff, trying to get us to tune it up, turn it up for. Just to make a spin or miss the tune-up. Like I, sometimes I make an ass of myself, right? But a lot of times I try very hard to keep people away from Billy when he's getting ready to race, specifically because I don't need them in his in his head. Yeah. I don't need them in his ear. He already knows what he's going to do. Everybody else just needs to go do it someplace else. So I'll stay right there by the truck, and sometimes I'll say something pretty nasty just to. I just don't have time for it. It's not, this is not the time. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes that gets me in trouble, but whatever. Um, it's hard. But ultimately, you went 60 feet. I thought we were going to be doing well. And then it just smoked the tire the entire rest of the way. Yeah, I, I think I should take up drifting. I mean, <laughs> it was honestly pretty fun. Like, All right. yeah, it was like, but that yeah. Was, that was it for round two. Yeah, and, then, and that was it for the night. We got to, I got to. You raced around too. Right, yeah. But yeah, we're not same story. <laughs> same thing I've been staying. No, that guy actually made a really good lick. Yeah. I mean I don't even like the the tune up that I had ended out here on that road, if I had that, it would have gone down, but I don't know what that was. I didn't yeah. save it. So uh, I was just taking a stab in the dark of what I thought that <laughs> visually you know, visually I could see the ramp on the screen. You know, I was trying to copy what I remember seeing, but the timing and everything, yeah. you know, I don't know that like Billy does. The other thing is that so. you can't save a tune up in the truck. He gets three tuning slots, I think total. For like boost ramp. Yeah, he gets three save tune ups and they have to start deleting them. Yeah. So, yeah, every like, time he's He pretty up. much starts from scratch every race for the most part. But which look is, how good he is at doing it though. Yeah, yeah I don't know. That's probably helpful in the long run. 
So after we all went out, uh, I started filming the finish line and we just started relaxing the rest of the night. So we had, we'll just, so it was actually really fun watching this race. It was kind of a thrill. So you had uh, the goat making really fast passes, Chicken Hawk, Kendall, Patches, um, and I think and Fensler. Who was making guy in the black passes. Camaro was that looked like Tabor's Camaro, but it wasn't. The green headlight no. one? Yeah, the green headlight yeah. one. Yeah, that one was moving out pretty well. Mm -hmm. I don't know who that guy was, but he was yeah. doing good. Yeah, the last eight pairs, there was a lot of close races. And so I was really surprised watching uh, the GOAT, Marty Wood. He beat Kendall by about a car, car and a half. And I was not expecting that. Like he was lane. doing, dude, I think it was second round or third round. He did a wheelie at like 330 yeah. feet. Yeah. Out it, the it, it, like, <laughs> it was just like, dude, that, that car does not make sense. That's the shit that makes you want to quit. I'm like, I yeah. can't even, he's wheeling 300 feet out and I can't even get this thing to go well, that That's time. the difference between a purpose built car for that kind of surface. Like that car has been racing out of Florida, street racing, and then uh, at the hole. Yeah. That car was built to dominate at the hole. Same with the Chicken Hawk. That's where those two cars yeah. Yeah. came from, and that's yeah. what they've been. That's what they were built to do: race on trash. And they Purpose got built back cars forward. to race on trash. See, so here's what I from. think's hilarious. Billy was telling me a couple weekends ago. I don't know where we're at. It might have been at Crossville. I, Marty uh, just figured out how to pull timing on his 6AL box. <laughs> that, that Nova's like it's, <laughs> it's almost never like yours. It's like. It's like a 90s Nova right out of bracket racing or something, but it's got like this 80s or 90s four length setup on it, like yeah. stuff you can't even get anymore. And he's like, yeah, Marty just figured out how to pull timing on a 6AL box and he goes out there and it like dies at Crossville and he still wins. But yeah, it's just, it's just funny. Some of those cars just work. They're, they're, they're just, old school, man. Those guys learned old school how to do this stuff without all the fancy computers. Yeah. Just like Billy's come up the same way. He learned how to do all that without fancy computers. But uh, watch what happens. And, you know, Billy's, what, 25 years old now? Watch yeah. what happens when Billy's 35. If, he's get, if he puts 10 good years in without distractions, uh, watch what happens. Oh, yeah. I was talking to Robert Itani the driver of Chicken Hawk before the night was over. We talked for a little bit and uh, King Turtle was there too and he, he was kind of bragging for uh, Robert. He was like, there's no crazy electronics in Chicken Hawk. Robert has three buttons on the steering wheel and they're all, I think he's got like three kits. And every pass he activates each kit by, like he does it and it's within I think a thousandth every pass. He he hits the first button and the second button. He he's, he's like he's he a machine. It, he does it by feel. He yes. drives by feel. He it literally is the electronics in that car. It's That's crazy. Badass. He's insane. And but, it just goes to show that like the talent that these guys have in in these kind of races. Oh, he's had that car twenty five years. He said. Oh shit. Yeah. That helps too. Yeah. But these, there's a lot of super talented guys out there that like are very smart. Um, I, I'm not saying that there's like a negative view on no prep racers or anything like that, but I'm here to tell you they're probably a lot smarter than you think they are. Yes. And the the ones, ones, you gotta be crazy. The though. ones who win all the time. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so the finals was Chicken Hawk versus the Goat. I bet on the Goat, and I lost seven, I lost fifty dollars to Billy and twenty bucks on Facebook. I'm pissed. <laughs> but that was a super close race. I think I think it was Chicken good. Hawk just edged him by a bumper right at the end and. Yeah. It, was it was good racing because towards yes. the end there everything was like we were waiting on the call and mm -hmm. um, Corey just announced three dates next year if you thought we were taking February off February 25th is the first one so oh. like, <laughs> was that the warm up? is that what they call it? The warm -up? I don't know what, I just saw Probably. February 25th back at Darlington so hopefully I'll get some redemption there and maybe we can figure something out to get everybody else down the track Bill will figure it out. I mean, there's no question. Yeah. If he was there, we w it would have been a totally different deal for us. But he's just that good at reading the surface and watching. Like, there's cars that he knows he's watched yeah. that, that bear witness to what he thinks is going on. Yeah. And if he can watch two or three of those really good cars, like, he can watch them on video. And he'll watch the suspension and the tire pressure. Like, he can watch a video of Robert Itani's car or the Billy Goat. And he can, he calls it studying game tape. Yeah. But he'll watch the video 
and he can almost tell you what the shock settings are, how much tire pressure was in it, and how much power they were trying to put down. Like he goes, he's very analytical about it. like he'll know. Yeah. I think this surface will hold a 158 to 165 60 foot. So that's the tune up I put in for that. And then he breaks it down between 60 to 330. Yeah. That's how he does it. And he's very good at it. I gotta. If I tell Billy I wanna go a 568, it's going 568. And if I, I'll tell him the 60 foot to it, I'll be like, I want a 568 with like a 140, 60 foot. It's, it'll go exactly that it'll number. It'll print the ticket. If, yes. if, there was a time, if there was a timing system, it'll print the ticket. Yes. Whatever whatever you tell him you want that car to do, if that, like he'll ask you, he won't just do it for you. He'll yeah. be like, he, he'll come to Tommy and say, what do you think we should do? Because he wants you to think. Mm -hmm. He wants you to think. And I watched him do it. What do you think that 60 foot will hold? And what do you think this? And what do you think that? He'll ask Tommy and then he'll put the tune up in Tommy asked for. If he thinks it's completely out of the ballpark, he'll step up and say something. I am. But, no, he did that to me the other night in Crossville. He, because I said something about changing the timing and it was that last, the last race I had of the second chance. Yeah. And he was just like, if you think that's what it'll do. I hate it. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I should have known right there that that wasn't the right answer. Yeah. What I told him, what I told him was not the right answer. That's what I'll do. Said, are response. you sure you want to do that? Man, Wait till Billy's kid. the old man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till Billy's my age and uh, he knows and has seen what I've known and seen. Wait till wait till he's the old man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and close this. I'm gonna have to make this its own separate video. It's probably been 30 minutes <laughs> right, now, but yeah, we're gonna right. have to do a, another recap for this next video we're doing. So stay tuned. We had. It was kind of a rough night. We went to a street race after Darlington, and uh, we'll can I tell the, my story on that one? Oh, okay. maybe in the next video. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's that's going to be a good story. Yes, time video. great story time. So we'll see you guys there. Appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you in the next video.